Recently, Jet Engine released the ability to add in dynamic functions without the need for any complex code editing. These functions allow us to easily do a range of really useful calculations. You can easily calculate totals, minimums, averages, summed values, and a lot more. But not only that, we can use these dynamic functions alongside filtered lists to create some truly unique use cases for them. In this introduction video, I'll take you through a couple of real world examples of how to include dynamic functions into both pages and template files. However, before I do that, let me just quickly introduce myself. My name is Paul C from WPTuts and I've teamed up with Crockleblock to bring you a series of tutorials on their dynamic plugins. Plugins like Jet Engine and Jet Smart Filters. Okay, now I've covered that, Let's just dive into this new tutorial. So let's kick this off by taking a look at the type of thing we're going to work with. Now we're going to start off with a really simple example and then we'll move on from there, but it should give you a good grounding in how this function actually works. So if we take a look at the top of our page now, where we've got the hero section, you can see we've got this little block of text that says properties from X price per night. So that data is using the dynamic functions as part of Jet Engine to take a look at the information stored in our database and then look for the lowest value. Then we can use that and put that wherever we want on our site. But we're not limited to the lowest value. We can do things like count, maximum, a whole range of different things. Now in this video, I'm just going to be giving you an overview of how these different functions work and then you can really get stuck in and open up your creativity when you see just some of the things you can do. So let me take you through and show you how you can use these new dynamic functions. I've come over into my dashboard and I've opened up the template now that is the listing template. And as you can see, it's exactly the same as what we just saw on the page in the demonstration, except for our new little section of dynamic functions. So we need to put that in first of all. To do that, we're going to come to the basics option. I'm just going to drop a heading underneath our main heading section. Now you can use any kind of options that you want. We're just going to reference dynamic data. With that in place, let me just quickly apply some styling so we can see exactly what's going on. Now set this to H6 so it's smaller and we're going to just come over and set this to be white. I'm going to adjust the typography ever so slightly as well, just so it sits in with our design. Okay. We've set that up. Next thing you need to do is come back to our content tab. Now, dynamic tags is where a lot of the real power inside Elemental Pro really starts to come into play. And we're going to tap into that and then use this dynamic functions option. Accessing those options couldn't be easier. With Elemental Pro, you can see we've got this little section at the top for our title. We've got a sort of placeholder text inside there, and we've got the dynamic tags option in the top right hand corner. Click on that. That's going to open up all the different dynamic options we have available to us. And as you can see, there are a ton of different options. So we could reference pretty much any kind of data we want from our site, from our archives, from the posts, all those kinds of really super useful things. But if we scroll down to the bottom, you see we have a section under Jet Engine. And inside there, we've got an option called Dynamic Functions. If we click and open that up, that will open up and insert a dynamic function for us. We now need to go ahead, fill out the relevant data, tell it where to pull the information from and how we want to reference that data before we'll see anything show up on the page. So the first thing we have is the function. We click to open that up. We have five options available at the moment, a summed value, an average value, count, maximum and minimum values. So some really useful things inside there. Let's just choose the minimum value for this example, because we want to emphasize how you can find a room from the lowest price throughout our entire database. So we'll choose minimum value. That now opens up some extra options. We've got the field name and so on. So we'll choose our data source first of all. So we're gonna click on there and we've got three different options. We can pull in from post meta, term meta, which is like our taxonomy information. So things like country, city, property type, and so on. And then you've got user meta, which would be related to the user. Now we're going to take a look in this example at the post meta because the data we want to pull, the price, for example, comes from the post meta. So we're going to open that up and now we have some extra options. Now the first one we have is the field name. In other words, what field are we going to reference inside our post meta to show the information we want on this particular dynamic function? Well, if you're not sure what to grab, it's very easy to find that information out. The easiest way to do that is come over into the Jet Engine section and open up your post types. From there, we're going to see any custom post type we've created. 
this example, we've got properties. We can open that up and underneath we've got meta fields. Currently I have seven meta fields that I've created. So these are all the custom meta fields associated with our custom post type of properties. We're working with the pricing, so we need this price per night option. If we expand that, you can see we've got the label, which is a sort of nice user way of seeing what this information is about. But what we are interested in is the name dash ID. This is the unique identifier for that particular custom meta field. And that's where our pricing information is going to be taken from. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that from there. I'm going to come back into our page and we've got our field name and we're simply going to just paste that information inside there. And you should see that will now search to our database, depend upon the size of your database and all those kinds of things like how fast your server is and so on, will dictate how quick you'll see the info. But as you can see, it pulls in 80. Now, 80 doesn't mean anything to anybody, really. Actually, this entry doesn't mean anything to anybody. So we need to fill out some more information and make sure the data that's going to be presented is correct and isn't pulling in data from things like posts that are in, you know, sort of pending, they're in draft view and so on. We want to specify they've got a specific status. We also want to specify where that data is coming from. So these are the next two options that are going to give us the all the opportunities we need to do just that. Data content currently says all posts. We're going to expand that and you can see we have posts from current term, current user and queried user. For this example, all posts is perfectly fine. Query by posts with status. This is where we can control only the published posts will be used to reference this data. So we're going to click and that will drop down all the different options that are available for statuses within our entire site. We're going to be just choosing publish. So we want to make sure that only the published posts are going to be used. Then it says leave empty to search anywhere. Query by posts with type. So again, we can click on there and we can choose where that data is going to come from. We're using a custom post type called properties, and you can see that's listed inside there. But we do have access to your default WordPress options like posts, pages, media, and so on. But we're going to choose properties. So we've basically done the things that we need to get this information in. We've set the minimum value is going to be the, the function we want to use. It's post meta is where the data is going to be referenced from. The name of the field the information is going to come from. We want all the posts that are published underneath the properties section. So now we can kind of go through and fine tune how this data is going to be presented. First thing you want to do, because we're working with numeric values, I don't want to leave this to be 80. So we're going to increase that and put a couple of decimal places in there. So that makes a little bit more sense. But now we have the advanced options, which are kind of your basic options you have as part of Elementor Pro. So all of the different kind of dynamic tags will have this advanced section. And this is kind of useful because we can use this to put information before and after and drop in a fallback if we want to, to make this a little bit more useful. You know, we don't know what 80 even represents. So let's just say we're going to put in properties starting from, then we'll put the pound sign in because we're working in the UK. So we're going to work with pounds and that immediately makes a lot more sense. But 80 pounds for what? Well, let's put something after that. So we'll say per night. So now that whole section makes a lot more sense. If we want to put a fallback in, we could put a fallback in. So you may have no properties inside there, which I can't imagine have a website with no properties on if this is your kind of business. But if you needed a fallback, you have the option to simply drop a fallback value inside there. And then if the dynamic function throws up no data whatsoever, then that fallback option could be very, very useful. So that's pretty much everything in place for this simple example. All we need to do is update our template to make sure this is in place. So we'll update that. We'll come back over to our site and we'll just refresh this page to make sure that everything is in place. And there we go. Property started from £80 per night. Now, if we change the price of any of these, so you can see £80 is the lowest per night. But if we went and change that, we'll see that will be reflected up here. So let's do that right now. Let's just quickly come into this property that we know is the lowest price property. And let's change the value inside it to something else. I've opened up that particular property, Avenue View, and if we scroll down, we can see there's our pricing information per night. Let's just change that now to 120. We'll save this. So that's no longer going to be the lowest price property. Now let's just reload our page. So we'll refresh that and we see our property price now starts at £92 per night, which is the next lowest price. Now we've changed that 80. So you can see it's a really simple way of working. And this is like I say, it's just one simple example. So let's take a look at a different example now and how you can start to tap into some extra things like filtering the actual data to show only the relevant information for a refined search as part of your site. 
So let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. I've got this section at the top called apartment and I've got one for hotel. These are the different subsections of properties. You can see we've got apartments and hotels. If I come to the apartment option, you'll see that says available properties is four starting at 92 pounds. If I go to hotel, you'll see this tells us there's only two available properties starting at 105. However, the template that's being used is the same template. So it's pulling that data dynamically from the filtered or searched different sections inside our archive. So this again is one of those areas that is incredibly useful if you want to create archives that have extra data inside there that's subfiltered. Pretty cool. Okay, so how do we go about doing that? Let's take a look. I've opened up the filtered property type archive. I've removed everything from it. So we are starting with basically just a blank page and I'm gonna show you how to build this up every single step of it. So the first thing we want to do is just pull in the archive data. And again, we're going to be using the listings option, which we've used in previous videos. Now, listings is a great way of being able to create custom loop layouts as part of Jet Engine. If you're unsure how to do that, there's a link in the description that will show you how to do exactly that and how the listings features all work. Okay, with that out of the way, what we need to do first of all is find the widget that we want. So we're going to just come to the top, we're going to type in listing. And you can see there's our listing grid. So we're going to drag and drop that over and we're going to use the template that we set up for each individual list item, which we're using throughout the site already. And we're going to use that inside this area. So the listing to select at the top, we're going to click on there and we're going to choose property listing. That will then pull in all of our listing for the property type. Let's make a little bit of space at the top for this. So we give it a bit of breathing room. So we'll put 50 pixels top and bottom. Okay, that's the first part of it done. Now, once we've done that, we need to just set everything else up to make sure everything is working the way we want. Now, because we're using Jet Engine and we're using the listings, we need to do one really important thing right now. Make sure we've got this selected, the listing grid, and we're going to say use as archive template. This will then enforce it to make sure that it works the way we want it to and show only the filtered data for an archive template. So we're going to select that and you see that now just immediately gets rid of the listing and just puts it back to the default WordPress post listing. That's perfectly fine. We don't need to worry about anything more than that. We've told it what to do. It's going to do it for us. If you want to set any additional information or any additional parameters, you can like it is a masonry grid. You want equal column height. So we say yes for that. If you had lots of entries, you could have load more. So it'll automatically load in as you scroll down the page kind of thing. You know, all those kinds of cool things. Other than that, there's not much else we really need to do here. Right now, though, it's not really giving us a lot of information. So let's just drop in the archive title at the top. So when people look at this, they can see they're looking at the right archive. We come back over to our widgets and we're just going to type in archive and you can see there's the option for archive title. We'll drag and drop that above our listing and there we go. You can set any parameters inside here you want. You know, you can set the HTML tag to whatever you want. We're going to leave it set as it is. That's perfectly fine. And now we're going to drop in our first dynamic function. So like we did before, we're going to come back to our widgets. We're going to open up the basic and we're going to drag in this heading. Drop that underneath the title and we're going to set this to be H6. So what we're going to do now is click on the dynamic tags exactly like we did before and scroll right down to the bottom for the dynamic function. What we need to do now is specify a different type of function. So we're going to click and open that up. We're going to choose count this time because we want to see how many entries are inside this specific archive section. So there's sub filters or apartments and hotels. Now, because we don't have many entries, it's going to be pretty obvious exactly how many there are. But if you were dealing with a site, a listing site that had hundreds or thousands of businesses or properties, locations, all those kinds of things, having this count option can be incredibly useful, especially when you're sub filtering data out. So, Using that, we're going to specify the data source again. So this is, again, it's going to be a post meta. We're going to drop in the same field name. You might be wondering, why are we using a field name when this is just going to count things? Surely it doesn't matter. We're not pulling any data as in numeric values and things for the price. Well, basically all it does is it is using any of your meta fields for this particular custom post type to count how many there are. If you don't put anything inside the field name, you'll see if I take that out from there, we have no value showing up whatsoever. So we need to put at least one meta field name inside there. And you can use pretty much any meta field you want, I believe. So we're going to drop the price per night in there. But this time with the data context, we need to change this. We can't have all posts. If expand that out, we want the option posts from current term. What that's going to do is 
it's going to be sub filtering out. So for example, if we're clicking on apartment to view just the apartments archive, then the current term is going to be apartment. Conversely, if we chose hotel, it would be hotel. So it's counting those up based upon the current queried term. So we're going to choose that option. Then we've got the taxonomy. So we need to open that up and say, where are we grabbing this data from? Apartments and hotels. So this is all set up as a custom taxonomy called property type. So we're going to select that from there. Now you see that sort of flashes as it goes through because it's just pulling in basic data. Next up, we've got our query by posts. We want to do the same again. We only want published posts. And you can see we've got query by post type. So we're going to do exactly the same and choose properties from there. Okay, so we've done those basics. Next up, we need to just scroll down a little bit so we can see the next option. So close the settings, open up advanced. And from there, we now need to just say what this six even relates to. So we're going to say available properties. There we go. So available properties is six. Put a space in after that. So we've said that there's six available properties in this particular subsection, and that's all pretty cool. And again, if you want to put in anything after or a fallback value, you can do that. So you may want to put a fallback for an empty archive that just says no properties available. So let's just do that. No properties available. Okay, so we've put a fallback in should that be needed. So that's the first part. Now we need to do the same thing again, which is going to go through and we're going to set up the pricing side of things. So to do that is all pretty straightforward again. And we can even make our lives just a little easier. We can select this and we can just duplicate it and we can just change the values that we need to change inside there. So selecting this to make sure it's active, we'll click on the little wrench now next to our dynamic functions entry to open up those settings again, and now we can change what we want in there. So we don't want the count, we want to set this like we did in the first example earlier on to minimum value. Post meta is fine, we're grabbing that data for the price from our post meta, and the field name price per night is the right field that holds the values for the price of each of the individual properties. We're going to leave the data context because this is, again, using that subfiltered data. So we leave everything inside there and we're going to leave everything underneath the settings. That's all still perfectly fine. We do need to change this advanced, though. Obviously, we don't want available properties now. We need to set this starting at and we'll just put a pound sign inside there. There we go. So now we have available property six starting at 92 pounds. Just get rid of the extra space inside there. Come back quickly into here and set our decimal places to two so it makes a little bit more sense when it's dealing with numeric data. So that's the basics of those done. What we can do now is we can set these to be in line with each other by simply coming up with the advanced section, come down into positioning and set this to be inline auto. And we'll do the same then for the one underneath. Over to advanced, into positioning, inline auto. And then we'll just come back up to our advanced and we'll just drop in a little bit of padding on the left hand side. So we say left is going to be 10 pixels of padding. And if we wanted to, we could put a bit of padding at the bottom just to push this entry down. So we're going to do the same thing there. So set that to 20 just to give us a bit of space. OK, so we've now set this up. So let's just update this. Now, the thing you want to make sure you have inside, you know, I've already set this up, but let's just take a quick look at the display conditions for this template. You can see this is using the property type equals all. So in other words, it's looking at the property type. When you need an archive to display that information, it's going to use this custom archive we've set up. If you expand this out, you can see properties is our taxonomy and we've got property type, property location. There's a ton of options inside there. So everything is perfectly set up. That's our conditions all in place. Save and close just to make sure that's all done. And now we are in place. So let's just come over and take a look at this in action. So here we are back at our initial page with our first example. Now let's come over and take a look at apartments, which we know is going to be less. So let's take a look in there and you can see available properties is four starting at 92 pounds per night. And you can see there's our 92 pound per night. There's four entries inside here. Come over and take a look at hotel. We've got the same template just being filtered down differently. And again, you can see everything is working perfectly fine. We're now two properties starting at 105. So everything is in place and working using these dynamic functions that's part of Jet Engine. Hopefully what you can see is they can be incredibly useful and there's a lot of use cases and the fact you can use these with sub-filtered templates and all those kinds of useful things opens up a lot of possibilities, especially like I say, with listing sites or sites pulling in dynamic values that you want to highlight You know those values for certain different reasons. In this example, the starting point prices and the number of properties in any given section. 
Now that you've seen some real world examples of dynamic functions in Jet Engine, can you see opportunities to use them in your designs? If so, let me know in the comments section below, because I'd love to get your feedback. As always, all of the applicable links are in the description below. My name is Paul C. Until next time, take care.